Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. We're looking at solving equations. Now, first of all, I'm going to probably deal with the question, what is an equation? Um, we have done this before, uh, plenty of times most likely, but an equation basically has uh, is, is an expression that has an equal sign. Okay, therefore, um, it equals a value. All right, so often what we have to happen in an equation, we are looking to solve the equation to find out what the value of the pronumeral is that makes this equation true. Okay, so we could have simple one step, two step, three step, we could have lots of steps equations. Okay, we basically deal with what we refer to as linear equations, and it is linear because these are equations of a straight line graph. In other words, the pronumeral has a power or an indice of 1. Okay, you could have an indice of 2, that would be a quadratic, or a 3 would be a cubic, etc. Okay, in, in theory, what you're actually doing is finding the equation of a particular straight line. So, in this question, how do we solve? Okay, well, we want to isolate the letter that we're looking for. So this x we want to have on its own. So at the end of it, we want to have x is equal to a particular value, which basically means we need to take all these letters, the 3, the 4, and the 5, and we want to get rid of them. Okay, so we just have the x on its own. Now, there are lots of different ways to do these equations. Uh, this is my personal technique, so just uh, see how you normally solve them and go that way. When looking at an equation, we have three numbers in this case. We always look for the weakest number to eliminate. For example, the 5 here is completely on its own. The 4 looks like it's on its own, but as I call it, it's in a little house, okay, um, with the x, where the x is upstairs with the 3, the 4 is downstairs, but this 5, he's on the outside. So how do I get rid of a plus 5? Well, we subtract 5 from both sides. Now, when I'm doing my equations, I don't often actually put the minus 5 on both sides. I use the rule, if it changes sides, it changes signs. Um, but for this purpose, I'm just showing you that the, what we actually are doing is, is cancelling the 5 out with the minus 5. So what I'm actually left with here, I'm left with 3 over 4, or sorry, 3x over 4 is equal to 7 take away 5 is 2. I'm now left with the 3 and the 4. Which is the weaker of those two? Well, the 4. He's downstairs on his own. The opposite of divided by 4 is going to be times by 4. So I'm left with 3x is equal to 8. Then how do I get rid of the times by 3? Well, we divide by 3. And I'm left with 8 divided by 3. And it's a fraction. I'm not going to bother putting it as a mixed numeral um, or a decimal. Um, a fraction is probably the best form possibly. Alrighty, let's see how you go with these next questions. Okay, so for the first one, 3x plus 5 equals negative 2. Well, the opposite of plus 5 is minus 5. You can see what I mean by it changes sides, it changes sides. I'm now going to clean that equation up. 3x is equal to, well, minus 2 minus 5 is negative 7. If you're not sure, use your calculator. Okay, I've got 3 times x, the opposite of times 3, is divided by 3. Now, I probably recognize that this is not going to go in equally, so I can just leave it as minus 7 over 3. Okay, next one. Now, this is a bit more challenging, this question, because we have fractions. Okay, so I'm going to write it out again. We've got y over 3 minus y over 7 equals 2. Now, once again, there's lots of different ways to solve this type of an equation. Um, I'm going to use one that is probably more commonly used. Some people don't like this, but it certainly refrains from making mistakes. Um, we've done a, uh, previously with my lesson simplifying. And if I had y over 3 minus y over 7, we would look to simplify this as being something over, in this case, 21. So I'm going to times the bottom by 7, the top by 7, the bottom by 3, the top by 3, which leaves us with 7y minus 3y equals 2. So all I've done is just simplify the bottom part, which I can now say is 4y over 21 equals 2. So what you might be able to see now, that changes into a nice two-step equation. The opposite divided by 21 is times by 21. I'm just going to get some more room over here. So 4y equals 42. Opposite divided by, so times by 4 is divide by 4. So y equals, um, we're going to put that as 21 over 2. 
or 11.5 as my answer. Okay, and what you could do is put this as a fraction and, and check your answer. And again, in that case, you could also put y equals 10.5 there because it's a terminating decimal. Alrighty, so let's go look at the next question now. Uh, so this is like a double-sided question, but it's also got a divided by in there, so you know, it's going to be a bit more challenging. Um, so what I'm going to do with this question, I'm going to get rid of the 5 to start with, just see if that helps me. B over 2 equals 3B, and 7 take away 5 is 2. Okay, now um, I've got B over 2. Now I want to get rid of this divide by 2. So what's the opposite divide by 2? Times by 2. So I'm going to times this whole side by 2. B is equal to, well 3 times 2 is 6B, plus 2 times 2 is 4. Now I'm going to get rid of the plus 4, take it away, it makes it minus 4. 6 minus 4 is 2 equals 6B. And you might want to rewrite it as 6B equals 2. Divide by the 6, B equals 1 on 3. And again, in any of these questions, you can certainly check your answer by putting the 1 over 3 back where the B is and making sure that the left-hand side is going to be equal to the right-hand side. Okay? All right, let's have a look at the next question. I think that's going to be it. So let's do one more last question. Um, we do 3A plus 5 all over 7 equals 1. Have a go at this question, see what you come up with, and we'll see if you're right. Okay, divide by 7, we're going to change it to a times by 7. 3a plus 5 equals 7. Take the 5 across, we have 3a equals 7, take away 5 is 2. Divide by the 3, a equals 2 thirds. Alrighty, I'm hoping you're starting to get the habit of this sort of thing. Um, this is going to be, I think it's exercise 3C. Have a go at these questions. Remember, you can always sub your answer back in. Sometimes it's a bit more challenging, but hopefully it's not too bad. Um, we'll see how you go. Have a great day, guys.